American Novels. A romantic story of the early days of Southern California. Soon after that territory had been annexed by the United States at the close of the Mexican War. An American classic that pictures eloquently the woes of the Indians as well as the old Spanish life of that era. NBC's University of the Air brings you the first episode in a two-part version of Helen Hunt Jackson's Ramona, another in our series of books that live American novels. Ramona came to live at the Moreno estate when she was four years old at the death of her foster mother, who was the Senora Moreno's sister. From the first, Ramona shared equally with Felipe, the Senora's only son. Equally in everything but the Senora's love. On Felipe, she lavished a burning passion. On Ramona, a brittle tolerance. One day, when Ramona was ten, her curiosity overcame her fear of the formidable Senora, and she attempted to unravel the mystery which had always shrouded her identity. Senora? Yes? Well, what is it, child? Senora, why did my mother give me to the Senora Ortegna? Your mother had nothing to do with it. It was your father. I wish I knew if my mother were dead. Why? Because if she is not dead, I would ask her why she did not want me to stay with her. Who has been talking to you of these things, Ramona? Answer me. I heard one Conte Luigo. Twice I heard him. He said mother was no good and that my father was bad too. Ramona, you must not believe any such thing. When you are a woman, I will tell you all that I know myself about your father and mother. All you have to do now is to be a good girl and say your prayers. And when Father Salviadera makes his visit here, he will be pleased with you. Oh, but... I said I would tell you when the time comes. Don't ever speak to me about it again. Ramona was 19 now. No one would have guessed by her beautiful, smiling face or manner that she'd known a moment's sorrow. But deep inside her was the knowledge that she was accepted by the Senora from a sense of duty rather than love. And there had scarcely been a morning that she did not say to herself, Perhaps it will be today that the Senora will tell me who I am. But the Senora never told. And Ramona never asked. And the deep affection that existed between Felipe and Ramona only kindled the jealous senora's resentment of the girl. For since the death of her husband, her love for Felipe had become more and more possessive. And so it was that Ramona had looked forward for many weeks to the visit of Father Salviadera, whose friendship was one of Ramona's most treasured possessions. He was still two miles from the Moreno house when Ramona met him and before even speaking, knelt for his blessing. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ramona. Father Salvia, dear. Ramona, my daughter. Are all well in the place? Yes, Father. Felipe has been ill with a fever, but he's up and about now. And the Signora? She's well. And you? Are you well yourself, Father? Oh, I am tired, Ramona. But happy to be here again. And to know that I'm not late for the sheep shearing. Who are the shearers this year? Indians from Temecula. Oh? I believe Felipe said the captain's name is Alessandro. Oh, yes. Alessandro Assis. I've known him since he was a small lad. And his father before him. Excellent people. So Felipe says. I have not seen him. Though Ramona had not seen Alessandro, he had seen her. And from that moment, he'd loved her. The next morning in the chapel, seeing her kneeling beside Felipe, he decided they must be betrothed. 
It might well have turned out that Ramon and Alessandro would not have spoken to each other had it not been for that morning in the shearing shed. You sure you don't want to take your place up on the roof for a while, Senor Felipe? I've been waiting to pack this fleece all year, Juan Khan. Don't worry, I'm not giving up my post. You just see that the men keep working. <laughs> we can count on that, Senor. Hey, Alessandro. All right, Senor. Every man of us can share a hundred sheep in a day. Some more fleece to be packed, Senor. Right up, then. We'll fill that pile of sacking bags and more before the night is over, Senor. Yes, I... Uh, uh, <laughs> You all right, senor? Yes. Yes, fine. It's just the dust from the fleece. It's quite thick up here. What a day. Never have I known the sun to beat down so. At least we have the shelter of the shed. The senor Felipe in the open on that roof for the whole morning. Aye, and packing all those bags. Uh, I don't envy him. <laughs> no chance of this wool going amiss in the market. More fleece, senor. What? Yeah. Yes, senor. I am ill. What? What, what, what has happened? Yes, fainted. Yes, yes, you will fall to the ground. I heard a cry, Juan. What? Felipe. He is dead. Oh, no. Oh, do not be alarmed by these idiots, senorita. He's only fainted. Well, let me climb up there to him. Holy Virgin, no, senorita. You will kill yourself. It is not easy for a man to reach those rafters. But how will we get him down? Senorita. Yes? It will be nothing for me to bring Senor Felipe down. In my arms, he is no more than one of the lambs yonder. Not the senorita trust me? Yes. I will trust you. You are Alessandro, are you not? Yes, senorita. I am Alessandro. It is a miracle how Alessandro's playing soothes Felipe. I believe it has saved my son's life. He didn't have a moment's real rest before. May the saints bless you for asking Alessandro to play, Father Salviadera. Oh, it was Ramona who suggested it. She had heard Felipe say how much he enjoyed Alessandro's violin. Hush. Perhaps we should leave Felipe now, Father. He seems to be in a sound sleep. Alessandro! Oh, good morning, Father. What is that you are doing, my son? It's a splint for Juan Khan's leg, Father. Oh, yes, poor Juan Khan. Uh, it is of this I wish to speak to you, Alessandro. Yes, Father? Uh, this senor would like you to let the men go without you and have you stay on in Juan Khan's place for a time. But there is yet another shearing, Father, at the Ortegna Ranch. It would not be good for me to break the promise. But could not someone else take your place, my son? Are you talking about Alessandro staying? Yes, my child. He feels he should go on with his band. Oh, he must not. We can't let you go, Alessandro. We need you here. And Felipe would be lost without your playing. He's far from well. Can't you stay? Yes, I can stay, senorita. I will stay so long as you need me. Come in. Ah, oh, Alessandro. <laughs> How is the leg today, Juan? Well, uh, no better, I'm afraid, Alessandro. No bones take long to knit. <laughs> but it is one comfort to know that you are taking care of my work, Alessandro. Now, uh, tell me, Alessandro, has the senora spoken to you of staying on here permanently? Yes. And uh, what did you say? I have not made a decision. I know my father has need of me in Temecola. And the Senor Felipe has need of you here. You know, I have often thought that if he does not get up from this sickness, the Senora will not be long behind him. It is but for him that she lives. And who would have the estate in that case? Hmm. I have never been able to figure out. 
Would it not be the senorita? Hmm. <laughs> Let the senora hear you say that. Hmm. The senorita will get little more than enough for her bread out of the Moreno estate. But don't tell me that you haven't noticed that the senora hates her. I cannot understand why why anyone would hate the senorita. Well, <clears throat> there was a scandalous tale about her birth. Uh, come closer to the bed and I'll tell you what I know. But you must promise not to breathe a word of it. You perhaps know that the senorita was the adopted daughter of the senora's sister. Yes. But a real mother was an Indian. Indian? Well, you know, it's under what, what's wrong. Why, well, you're as pale as Father Salvador. It is nothing. Then the senorita is not happy here? Uh, she would never complain. And the rest of us love her very much. Uh, including the Senor Felipe? Well, could he help it, man? Our... Are they betrothed? Oh, saints preserve us. No. You would have to bury the senora. Uh, But we were discussing your staying here. I I want to try to persuade you. You have persuaded me, Juan. If my father gives his consent, I shall stay. It was strange to see how easily Alessandro fitted into his place in the Moreno household. In the matter of Felipe's health, the senora abided by all of Alessandro's suggestions. One afternoon, as Ramona sat on the veranda embroidering, Alessandro came from the workshop carrying a rawhide bed. The senora has given me permission to place it here on the veranda, senorita, and senor Felipe is to lie here. But Alessandro... Is it not harmful to sleep out in the open air? My people do not think so. Unless it is cold, senorita, we like it better. Mm, It is good to look up at the sky at the night. Yes, it would be. I never thought of it. I should like to do it. Is something wrong, Alessandro? You look at me so strangely. Forgive me, senorita. You made this bed yourself, Alessandro? Yes, senorita. You are very skilled at handiwork. I always enjoy seeing the things you've made. Then, then perhaps the senorita would not be offended if I... What, Alessandro? Some weeks ago, I I made for the senorita two nets, such as our women use to carry all sorts of burdens. After I finished them, I... I felt them unworthy of the senorita. Oh, Alessandro, let me see them. I have them here in my basket. Oh, they're lovely. And they are strong, senorita, like iron. I wove them from the fibers of a flax plant. Oh, so very beautiful. Is it carried by putting this band across my forehead? Just so. The senorita must have seen Indian women wearing them. No, Alessandro, I've never seen one before. How strange I should know how they are worn. This was the first of many gifts which Alessandro gave to Ramona. Simple gifts, yet great ones, because they were given and received with love, though no such words had been spoken between them. For once the senora was unaware of the situation in her home because she had schooled herself to be unaware of Ramona. But Felipe was quite aware, and he knew that love such as that could not go on indefinitely without expression. But the suddenness with which it did come was a surprise not only to Felipe, but to Ramona and Alessandro as well. They had gone to the artichoke patch where Alessandro was showing Ramona how to make flowers from last year's seed pods. And so, in no time, I have made a wreath for you, senorita. Oh, it's too lovely for me. (laughs) I shall put it at the feet of the Madonna in my room. And I shall tell her you made it. (laughs) That is the first time I've heard you laugh, Alessandro. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I have much on my mind, senorita. Your people? You feel responsible for them? Yes. And yet there is nothing I can do. Already thousands have been turned out of their villages by the Americans who say they own the land. Then it would be a good thing for you to stay on here, Alessandro. Do you feel the senora wants me to stay? I think so. But I'm not sure. It's not easy to be sure what the senora wishes. Oh, senorita, must must you always stay here? I... I have no other home. I was the senora's sister's adopted child, you know. I... I heard so. The worst thing is, Alessandro, she won't tell me who my mother was. I don't even know if she's alive or dead. Let's not talk about sad things, but pleasant things. About your staying here. Would it truly be a pleasure to the Senorita Ramona if... if I stayed? I should be very unhappy if you left, Alessandro. Oh, senorita, then... then you will not be angry if I... If I say that I... I love you? Oh, no, Alessandro. I'm glad. But you, senorita, you could not... You do not... Yes, yes, Alessandro, I do. I love you. Oh, senorita, do you mean that you will go with me? That you are mine? Yes, Alessandro, yes, I will go with you. I love you. Oh, beloved. Senora. Silence, shameful creature. Go to your room. And as for you, you will answer to Senor Felipe. Out of my sight. Go, Alessandro. Yes, Senorita. As you wish. Such brazen calmness. Senora. Oh, speak not to me. I will take you back to the house. Senora. You hurt my arm. You need not hold me. I will go with you. I'm not afraid. Oh, no. We shall see how quickly this bravado changes to cringing cowardice. Senorita Ramona Ortegna. The senora locked Ramona in her room. And it was long after dinner in the evening that she unlocked the door and found Ramona kneeling before the statue of the Virgin in her room. Get up. I have brought you some bread and milk. Thank you, Senora. I do not care for any. No? Just what do you have to say for yourself? I tried to tell you this afternoon, Senora. If you had listened, you might not have been so angry. Neither Alessandro nor I have done anything wrong. We love each other. We're going to be married and go away. Marry? Marry an Indian? I will never permit it. I have never disobeyed you, Senora. But this is different from all other things. I have promised to marry Alessandro, and you are not my mother. But I stand in a mother's place to you. Senora, the whole world cannot keep me from marrying him. Oh, you talk like a fool. Do you not know I could shut you up in a nunnery tomorrow? No, you cannot. Who is there to hinder me? Alessandro. Alessandro. A beggarly Indian. On whom my servants will set the dogs if I bid them. You would not dare. Felipe would not permit it. Felipe! How dare you pronounce his name? He will never set eyes on you when he hears the truth. You are wrong, senora. Felipe is Alessandro's friend. So, the senorita thinks she is all-powerful in the Moreno house. We shall see. Come to my room, and I will explain to you... Why, you will not marry the Indian Alessandro. In the Senora's room, behind the statue of St. Catherine, there was a hidden compartment. And from this secret place, she took a large black box. It contained a small fortune in jewels, which had been the Senora Ortegna's. There was also a letter to the Senora Moreno, which she read to Ramona. And all of these jewels are to be given to Ramona on her wedding day, providing she marries worthily and... and with your permission. That is the end of the letter. But it does not say who my mother was. There was no need to write that. Everybody knew your mother was a common Indian. My mother? Yes. 
A common, low Indian. I told my sister when she took you, the Indian blood in your veins will show someday. And now it has. Yes, Senora Moreno. The Indian blood in my veins shows today. I understand many things I never understood before. I'm glad I'm of Alessandro's people. Where is my mother? I will go to her. She will be glad that Alessandro loves me. I know nothing about your mother. Some low, vicious creature your father married when he was out of his senses. He married her? Yes. His name was Angus Fale. My father. All of these jewels are yours, Ramona, if you marry worthily and with my permission. Otherwise, they go to the church. Yes. That is where they should go. I don't want them. You will not promise to give up this Indian? Never, senora. Never. Then the consequences be on your own head. Felipe had also witnessed the scene in the artichoke patch. But he felt it would be wiser to let his mother speak to him of the matter. He had every confidence that when she did, he would be able to win her agreement to the marriage. But Felipe, more than anyone else, was helpless against his mother's genius for wielding the thoughts of others. Would you be willing that your own sister should marry Alessandro, my son? Would you? No. No, but... <laughs> I knew you could make no other answer. Ah, what would you think, Felipe, of having her go back to the sister school for a time? Mother, you wouldn't shut the poor girl up in a convent. Can you advise anything better? Advise? This is what I advise. To let Ramona and Alessandro marry. Without our consent? If they can't marry with it, they'll do it anyway. Could we possibly give a stronger endorsement to their marriage than by keeping them here? I suppose not. But then, do we force them to run away? Oh, no. If they go, it will be of their own accord. You do not look happy, my son. I can't help feeling we're... We're simply turning Ramona out of the house. Turn her out? Ramona has a home here as long as she will accept it. It is not just, Felipe, to say that we will turn her out. Oh, forgive me, dear mother. This miserable business has so upset me, I... I can't seem to see anything as it is. Oh, thank you for your precious sympathy, Felipe. If it were not for you, I should long ago have broken down beneath my cares. Yes. We must settle this quickly. I shall send for Ramona at once. I wish to impress upon you, Senorita Ramona, that we consider you a member of our own family. So long as we have a home, it is yours. If you choose to leave it and to disgrace yourself and us by marrying an Indian, we cannot help ourselves. Have you anything to say? Senora... Perhaps I shall not speak with you again before I go away. I thank you once more for the home you've given me for so many years. And you too, dear Felipe. I shall always love you as long as I live. Are we to understand that you are taking your leave now? I do not know. I've not seen Alessandro. I've not heard. Alessandro has gone. Gone? Oh, no. Not gone, Felipe. Only for four days, to to make a Oh, what did he go for? Why did you let me go with him? Oh, why did he go? He went because my son told him to go. My son thought, and rightly, that the sight of him would be more than I could bear just now. Oh, you have been cruel. God will punish you. <laughs> It was sunset of the 18th day since Alessandro's departure. Ramona was wan and haggard. She ate nothing and scarcely slept. The senora stayed so close to Felipe, there was never a chance to talk with him alone. Ramona began to think that she would die. 
she had been too weak to do anything but lie in her bed for four days. And then suddenly she became vividly aware. It was not a sound, not a sight. She sat up quickly in bed, bewildered, alert. Alessandro is not dead. He is not dead. He's somewhere near. I'm well again. I must go out to meet him. Alessandro is near, I know. She had walked for more than a mile down the river road before she saw the figure of a man leaning wearily against a tree. Alessandro! Senorita. You've been ill. Oh, Alessandro, what is it? Oh, my senorita. I could not go on without one sight of your face. Alessandro, what are you saying? <laughs> senorita, do you not know what has happened? No, I know nothing. Oh, dear senorita, I, I have no home. My father is dead. My people are driven out of their village. I am only a beggar now, senorita. We've all been starving. But, Alessandro, I can't understand. Who has the land now? Americans. It was decided in a court that they owned our land. They are going to steal all the land in this country. Where have your people gone? Most of them to Pachanga, about three miles from Temeco. But the land there is poor and there is so little water. Oh, oh my senorita, I cannot burden you with any more of my sorrows. Alessandro, I have something to tell you. I am an Indian. I belong to your people. I knew it, senorita. And you never told me? One can't swore me to secrecy. But are you not glad, Alessandro? Yes, my senorita. Then, then why do you want to leave me? My senorita knows my life is hers. She can ask me to go into the fire for her. And I would gladly. But I, I cannot take my senorita's life to throw it away. She's tender. She would die. She cannot lie on the earth for a bed and have no food to eat. I'm strong. I can work too, Alessandro. I'm not afraid to lie on the earth and God will give us food. Oh, Alessandro, take me with you. I'd rather die than not be where you are. Take me with you, Alessandro. Senorita. My senorita. <laughs> Ramona by Helen Hunt Jackson is one of the best of America's novels, brought to you each week by the NBC University of the Air. Next week, American Novels will present the final episode in the dramatization of this story. We hope you'll be listening, and that you'll pay a visit to your local public library very soon. You'll find there countless hours of entertainment for the asking. Many American novels in the 1947 summer series are included in the useful handbook of the world's great novels, which you may obtain by sending 25 cents to World's Great Novels, Post Office Box 30, Station J, New York 27, New York. Ramona was adapted for radio by Agnes Eckhart. The music was composed by Emil Soderstrom, and the orchestra was conducted by Bernard Berkowitz. The entire production was under the direction of Norman Felton. Ramona as a child was played by Florine Sears and as a young woman by Geraldine Kay. Hilda Graham was heard as Signora Marino and Larry Alexander as Alessandro. Others in the cast were Jim Humeland, Art Peterson, Bill Rath, and Art Hearn. Everett Clark was the narrator. This is Don Elder. This program came to you from Chicago and has been a presentation of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.